Hello everyone and welcome back to Arthelia's Vintage and Handmade. My name is Naomi. If this is your first time joining me, I'm so glad to have you. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back again. I have noticed that we have had a big influx <laughs> in new subscribers in the last couple of weeks. Um, don't know if it's because everybody is staying in and suddenly finding my channel. But no matter how you got here, I'm so happy to have you. I hope you like what you see and you stick around. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, it is going to be about my sewing room and what I'm about to do to it. If you notice, this is my usual setup right over here um, with my fabric collection in the background. But it's a little chunky looking like right over here, you know? There's some stuff that's not usually there. Um, Believe me, this room is very messy. <laughs> it is like a tornado in here. And it has only gotten worse because um, it has become the catch-all for just a lot of things that have lost their designated home. And um, just with me redoing my house and doing a lot of different projects, things that were in one place are now being rehomed here, whether permanently or temporarily. And it has just got very out of hand, especially since I'm not currently working up here. But all of that is going to uh, change very soon because I had a project that I've planned to do um, to make a new sewing cutting table, project cutting table. And I didn't really intend to do it right now while I'm working on all the other projects that I have going on around the house. But like I said, so many things in other rooms have been displaced and some of those things are, are things that I want to keep up here. So back in October, I think it was September or October, I was working at an estate sale and one of the items there that did not sell that I ended up purchasing at the end was a folding um, ping pong table. The kind that is just the table itself. No paddles, no, no anything. It's just basically the boards and it's in two pieces and each piece is hinged in the middle. So it's a total of four panels. And I bought that, you know, I didn't, I did know what I was gonna use it for at the time I, because I ignored it the whole time and then I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. That would make a great cutting table top. It's huge. It's absolutely gigantic. Um, I think it measures close to nine feet long. So I really, you know, this was going to be my project for whenever I could get to it um, because this room was not on the list to do right now. Everything else in the house was taking priority. So when the idea came to me that, well, if I create different storage for my fabric and my sewing supplies and all the things, the craft items in here. I have some shelving that I, ha I don't access very much and it's not really convenient to get things down from there. And I feel like that would be a great place to put the Barbies. They could live up there and they'd be up out of the way. That storage is already there. And then I could build my table and the storage units that I want to use to do that with could then rehome all my important things. A lot of things don't have storage. I have more fabric than is here. Some of it is packed away in storage boxes and some of it is just in bags. There is a huge mountain right here next to me. And uh, that is all like the most recent things, stuff that I've shown you in, in videos of hauls, but it has no home. So, um, I decided that this was a good time for me to do it. So I sat down and I mapped out based on the size that the table was. I wanted to figure out exactly what size cube system. I'm going to use these cube units. Now these are not the Calyx system from Ikea, but they're the same style. I don't have the Ikea ones because I can't get them. This one is from Walmart, I think, Walmart Online. Um, but the price on these has gone, I think I paid about 65 or 69 for this one. 
um, well over a year ago when I got this one and they have since gone up to about 89 and since I was going to need multiple parts to build this I wanted to keep my cost down but I also did not want to go with some of the flimsier units that are like this it had to be sturdy because it was going to support this big ping pong table which is very very heavy so I laid a tape measure out on the floor and I wanted to see perspective of what the full length of this table would look like. And then I looked up some blog posts um, by Gumbai of Gali. If you are familiar with her, she does wonderful sewing and knitting and has a vintage home that is absolutely adorable. She built one of these tables like this. I looked at what hers was and what her measurements were compared to what I had in length. Uh, width is right about spot on the same so no problems there but it just her what hers was was a good couple of yards shorter than mine I felt that the size that I have in these ping pong tables was just too big but since they're in panels and there's four panels I took the measurement of three and did a comparison and that comes out a little bit larger than what she built but not excessively so and so I decided that three panels would work and since they're hinged all I need to do is remove the hinges from one panel and attach the hinges to the set of two and then I will have three that are hinged together and that will sit right on top of the cube systems now of course the cube systems are going to be on their side so I had calculated that for a nice fit to get as much as I could with a little bit of leg room spacing underneath and to support the <clears throat> the ends and the sides I would need two of these eight cube units and two four cube units which would be two on top two on bottom I found the one I ordered on target.com they had the best prices and had a good I think they they were about the same price that I paid for this one. Um, it's their threshold line and um, they had really good reviews so I opted to go with that and they also had them in every single size down you want. So you could get an 8 cube, a 6 cube, a 4 cube, and a 2 cube. So no matter what configuration I came up with it was all going to be right there and I didn't have to shop around other locations and I could have all the same I wanted to make sure that I had as much uniformity as I possibly could I purchased from a shop on Etsy called uh, oil cloth by the yard they have all kinds of cute oil cloth patterns and florals and cherries I bought the turquoise background and I am going to use that as my cover for the top to cover up the actual surface of the ping pong table. In addition to that, I also have a roll out vinyl cutting mat that has all of the markings on it uh, for yardage and things like that, which won't even cover the whole thing, which is perfectly fine, but it will fit on there nicely. So back to the size of my table. The other issue that I ran into was height. What is the good height? Again, I looked at By Gum By Golly and I saw what she talked about in reference to her height and what she decided on as um, a good height for her. She's maybe like a couple of inches shorter than me, so I knew I could allow for a couple of extra inches. And as the units stand on their side they're 30 inches tall so I and 35 is about count standard counter height so I was gonna have to do something about that and I researched different kinds of things first I was thinking of casters and I really didn't know for certain that something that large did I really need it to roll so then I decided no when it goes in its spot I think it's gonna be fine so then I started looking into legs and let me tell you legs for things are not cheap either and I was really at this point trying to keep the cost down because all of these units added up I mean and I started with a five dollar investment I really didn't want to go through the roof with 
this but there were certain things I absolutely had to have and couldn't skimp on and I had done good with the pricing on the shelving so I didn't really want to spend a ton of money on the legs it just seemed like not necessary for such a small portion of the project so I finally found on Amazon a set of adjustable legs which is great five inches just like chrome cylinders with the little adjustable base this house is old as I've said before and the floors especially up here in this attic room are not level so I really wanted the table to be as level as possible and this was the best way I could do it I could adjust each leg and make the whole thing as level as possible so they came in two sets together which was fantastic and I think they were about um, $25 so it was going to cost me 50 for all of the legs which still sounds like a lot but compared to what I was going to run with the casters or something else I was in the 75 85 and up dollar range just for the legs or wheels whichever I had chosen to do it through Home Depot or Lowe's or any of those other type places it was just too expensive so I'm really happy the legs arrived today I have one of my uh, eight cube units the other one was not shipped somehow and so Target has sent me out another one that is supposed to be arriving tomorrow. I have the mint ones and then my oil cloth has uh, just been shipped I believe yesterday. So that is the last component in addition to the second eight cube that I'm waiting for. I want to give you a quick before of what this room looks like now. So I am going to put pick the camera up and you're going to see the disaster area that this room has become. And believe me, yes, there was a point when it was beautiful and neat and organized. First, I'm going to start by showing you this darling new chair that I have got for my filming chair. So you can see this is where I film. And this is a mid-century 1950s colonial style I absolutely I'm crazy about this chair and it does not fit with any of my decor down downstairs but I had to have it and so it is going to live up here and it's going to be my filming chair um, to me it it just screams I love Lucy it looks like just like something she would have had in her Connecticut house and look at that fabric that vintage original fabric it is so beautiful and the little tufts I had to have it anyway okay so here we go so here is the door so when we come in to my left is what you see here these are my sewing books and um, vintage catalogs so all of this is now going to go into the new cubes I have a vintage lamp there that used to be next to my bed many years ago um, a vintage head girl um, that is waiting to have her makeup repainted a little bit there and my sewing books um, and then of course my fabric which is totally full down to the floor that will be a separate video that I will show you also we'll go through that plus what I have elsewhere as you'll notice this room it needs a paint job this is the remains of old border that was up here when we moved in this is a sample of the paint that I'm going to put in here this was originally purchased for my son's bedroom but it was um, too uh, purpley we were going for more of a sonic blue and to me this is more of like a French blue so um, I decided to keep that for in here and so we have to, or I have to, redo all of this and paint all this. This room has never been touched at all. So over here to the right, this is the storage shelves that I was telling you I have. Um, I've got craft paint and some yarn storage right there. And um, my tins that were my grandmother's that hold all kinds of vintage notions and um, other sewing supplies and buttons. 
I've got this plastic box right here that is full of um, wearing history patterns and large uh, printable patterns. Then I've got some crochet uh, booklets right there, my craft paints, uh, my head model from when I was doing snoods. And then below this we have a major disaster area of the table that I would work at. Everything has been piled on top of this wooden table. Um, I had been doing acrylics for a while. I was planning on putting um, putting a resin jewelry in my Etsy shop, but I did not get my plan worked out the way I had wanted, so all that was put on the back burner. So this table has just become a catch-all for lots of things. This is my Dremel. This is my cutting mat that has been displaced since I folded the table so it'll be nice when that has a permanent home um, and then here in front I have got storage boxes of dolls that need to be moved to the attic um, some projects here that I had pre-washed fabric for and didn't get to do last year um, my sweater that I had knit and is waiting to be frogged so I can make it in a smaller size and let's see um, right here I also have this is right next to the door um, these uh, are all full of other kinds of craft things and supplies in here um, some boxes and things of stuff that has come up there's some Barbies that will have to be rehomed I've got a box full of vintage patterns to be sorted through <coughs> excuse me um this is just these stacks of things there's some vintage clothes down in there and um, a blanket waiting for repairs <laughs> this is like the most cluttered corner um, doll patterns uh, I'm going to get used to or I'm going to get rid of this unit over here that has something stored in it but was never fully set up so that all can go away this whole corner should open up um, more dolls more patterns some sewing books back in the corner and then there's also a drawer system that is full of doll sewing patterns um, and then I think that storage box down there, it has um, just some odds and ends in there. And then this turquoise um, laundry hamper has more fabric, um, some, usually some smaller pieces and scraps that I have um, accumulated. There is a shoe waiting to be repaired. Okay, and then I also have, this was displaced from my bedroom because I got a chair and that's in this place now this dividing screen which I'm hoping to still be able to use up here I love it I wanted one of these my whole life when I was a kid in fact I used to play with my mother's folding cardboard sewing tape cut sewing mat and I would stand that up on the floor and use it for a changing screen I think they're so cool Okay, so then here I have my drawer system that has sadly, very shortly after getting it, not even a year, has had some warping issues where uh, the drawers don't say, stay on the <clears throat> the drawers don't stay on the track. So I am going to have to figure out a way to remedy that. Again, this is not an IKEA unit. This is on from Amazon, and I do not think they have it anymore, which is good because it was not worth the money I paid considering this happened to it. The, the drawers just drop. More projects in the process. Here, things have been just stacked. A pattern that I had forgotten I purchased. Lots of ribbon from when I was doing Etsy. And let's see, scrap trash can. These boxes are empty and waiting to go downstairs so I can move some more things around down there. This is my green dress that I was working on in the fall. And it hasn't been touched since then. So maybe sometime I'll get back to that when I'm not mad at it anymore. This is a fun little shelf. Um, the shelf has been here so I decided to just put a few little mementos up here 
I love this little print of Paris. It's one of my favorite things. It reminds me of the uh, Madeline books. And um, my son liked the ponies when he was very little. And he of course said, I forgot this girl's name, but this was me because she sewed. <laughs> so I have her up here. Um, the cowboy kitten. Uh, my cat Theodore is named after this book, even though he doesn't look like him. But uh, I love this little tiny golden book story. Um, my husband's old U of A ID. Uh, those cool buttons that I got um, of Gale Storm. Uh, a little sewing teapot that had been my grandmother's. Um, a bookmark that was a souvenir from my wedding and a little rubber baby doll that was mine when I was a kid. Oh, and back here, that's yours truly, right there. Okay, then we have the windows. Um, let's see, a bag full of scraps. My old cutting mat, a small ironing board, a vintage suitcase that has some things stored in it some patterns that were being used my cute little lady lamp that is extra light over here when i'm sewing at night this is my sewing machine uh, my newest sewing machine it's a janome that i got um a little more than a year ago i think on amazon i love it i love its 80s retro vibe um this is one of my dresses i had been photographing that's why she's on the mannequin. I made that one last year about this time. Some thread. Okay, then we have this little table over here. This is my sewing chair. There's my favorite sewing box. Um, my sewing chair, which is a vintage office chair. Um, like what would be used for telephone operators. I believe they have similar ones on Mrs. Maisel. And let's see. Then we have what used to be the sitting area. I bought this fantastic 1950s vintage sectional. It has three parts. Um, I have them covered because the fabric is deteriorating, the insides are deteriorating, and my goal is to have them reupholstered. So, uh, but this used to be if I wanted to just hang out up here, do hand sewing. So all of that idea is not going to be anymore. Um, there is a 1950s mid-century side table over there. The, um, I have another one, which is either hidden in here or I've moved, oh no, it's the one next to me when I film. I can't even think. Okay, so I have this sectional here. There's a box of vintage dolls. And then there is tons of storage and stuff that has to be gone through. And I think there's some of my fabric in there also in this closet. Um, but the coffee table that for the vintage set is under all of this mess. Uh, there is another one of my sewing machines. This one um, was I inherited from my friend that had passed away. Uh, I got that and then there's my original sewing machine that I got when I graduated high school it has since gotten very very yellow but it's still a workhorse but um, I needed a much smoother running machine right now we have some new vintage hats that will appear maybe in another video sometime um, my floor length mirror that I use for fittings there you can see my table that is folded up now and another hat is sitting on it more dolls yes i was a big doll collector so a lot of these girls either have to be worked into this room or put away and stored and then coming back around there's the shelf with all my patterns and my table there's the other end table obviously and it has a bunch of patterns that have to be put back up onto the shelf the other end of the table and some more hats that are laying there safely so they don't get crushed my favorite lamp 
that is living up here now, but I originally bought for um, downstairs. And then we're back around to my fabric again. And in the middle, where I've been mostly standing from, I have my ironing board, and that's what I prop you up on when I am filming, and my lamp that I use for filming. So, there you have it. Oh, and there is, there it is, the start of this. There is the ping pong table. So you can see hinges, one, two, three, four sections, and I'll just be using three. And so, that is what you have. That picture used to hang in my bedroom, but I've replaced it, so it has to find a new home. But this is the current state of disaster that my sewing room is in and I cannot wait to get this all organized and back in business again. It will be fantastic. There's that chair again. I can't stop looking at it. It's so pretty. So pretty. So there you have it. Uh, I hope that was entertaining for you a little bit to see the chaos that I've got going on up here. Um, let me get back into a little, little better view for you now. Let's look at the fabric again. So that is all I have for you today. And this is part one of the let's redo my sewing room um, video series. And so I will get back to you with part two which hopefully will be not too long when I get my table going and put together. Uh, if you'd like to see some footage of me putting together, maybe I'll record some and do some time lapse of that because I don't think you need to see me assembling the furniture. You all know how that goes together. But uh, maybe as I put the components together, I can uh, maybe do a little time lapse of that. So there's that and then there'll be all the organizing and I am also going to shortly, um, probably the next video up will be my sewing book collection. I'll go through that because I'm going to be having to take it down as it is. It is starting to slide so I will go through and film that probably next after this video and show you my sewing books. And then the next ones when I'm organizing fabric will probably be that. I'm really glad you joined me for this video today and thank you so much for all the new subscribers I'm really surprised we are so fast approaching 500 now and as I promised 500 subscribers there will be a giveaway I'm thinking it's going to be a multi-part giveaway because I know not necessarily all of my viewers are here for sewing. Some are here for vintage, some are here for knitting. So I will have three different prizes to offer and you can choose which one you like to be entered in when the time comes for that. That way if you prefer the sewing stuff you can enter for sewing because it would make no sense for you to get knitting things if you don't knit. So I think that's probably going to be the best way to handle that. I am just totally losing my words right now. I've been talking and talking here for quite a bit. Anyway, um, again, thank you for the subscribers. I really appreciate you. Please like and share. Give it a thumbs up. Helps me come up to the top of the searches a little bit. And um, leave me a comment. What do you think of this disaster? Do you have any suggestions ideas of um since i'm pretty much working with a blank slate so to speak it's cluttered but i can pretty much do what i want to do um how where things should go um any particular features i should include and uh, stuff like that just let me know let me know in the comments below i love to read your comments i do my best to answer all of them i'm pretty sure if i've missed any i'm sorry uh totally uh an oversight because i definitely um intend to at this point i can answer everybody's comments so i would love to hear comments from you so i will say goodbye and until next time bye